as I mentioned in the song, I spent a bit of time in jail, but I'm not gonna start there. I'll start at the beginning. As a young fella, I came from a, a broken family. So my parents separated very early in life. My mother had a mental illness, which um, sometimes I sort of grapple with a bit of a spiritual connotation in that space, but she had a mental illness, which made my sister and my life very dysfunctional. We went to at least 10 primary schools. Um, on occasions, my mother would come and flip me out of bed in the middle of the night and tell me we we're gonna get up and clean the house. One of my somewhat humorous memories, um, I love my mum. I adore her, I've led her to Christ on occasion, so I you know, give glory for her, but this is just my life. So one day I came home from school, she was in midway through an episode and she was on the house roof, half naked with a dressing gown, throwing tiles off the roof. So I was a very confused young man. I, I didn't really know what to think. I grew up in a, a school that taught about Jesus, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. When I was 26 years old, I was hitchhiking, I was putting on a fundraising concert, and I was hitchhiking down the, the Mullumbar Hospital, I mean, sorry, the Mullumbar Highway, and I was hit by a semi-trailer on my elbow. So if you could imagine walking down a road, hitchhiking and getting hit by a semi-trailer, the impact of that on your body it spun me around. I don't know if you've seen the cartoon with the Tasmanian tiger where he goes, <laughs> that was me. Wow. I was spinning. I went under it, ran over my leg. I still have titanium rod in there to this day. My foot, it was sucking me under the truck. It threw me out. On impact, I died of shock on the ground. Wow. In that moment, I knew that it wasn't just the body, that this is just a tent. My soul was falling through the earth. Wow. Not where you want to be going. Mm -hmm. That sent me on a quest. I looked at Hari, I looked at Buddha, I looked at all these places, I came up empty. I thought, what do I do with this? That was sending me crazy. I knew there was more, but the more I looked, that I discounted Jesus from my upbringing. I would forgot about him because what I thought was my rules and regulations, and I had to see this guy, I thought that can't be it. When I was 40 years old, I was going through a tragic time in my life, which I won't get into any of the backstory. I got in an altercation, which led me to jail. I got charged for murder, which was later dropped for manslaughter. Not somewhere I thought I would be, not something I thought my life would look like. Sitting in this jail cell, the first day I walked into the yard, a gentleman came over to me after I almost seen someone get bashed to death with a mop bucket, came over to me and said, do you know Jesus? I thought, I don't know what I know. I can't even process where I am. He said, can I give you a book? At that time, I couldn't read. As a young man, I'd been to a lot of schools. I took on a lot of labels. I said, you're dyslexic, you're this, you're that. I started to take them labels. I started to own them labels. I started to be that. So he gave me a book and he said, this is about God, maybe you should read it. I went in, I threw it on the cell, cupboard. I came out the next day. He said to me, did you read the book? I said, oh, that Christian guy. Um, yeah, I did. He said, what part did you like? I said, page, page 19. That was really good. He said, can you tell me what was on page 19? I said, no, I can't. So he sort of got the message and started to leave me alone. God was calling me in there, like Alicia said. When I was at my lowest, he never gave up on me. He... He was going after me the whole time. Looking back, I know he was going after me before that. But I couldn't hear. I couldn't see. I was blind. So I got, I got in there. It wasn't until I got in an altercation in there, which I didn't even want to have. Next minute, the gang of youth are out to get me. So I'm in a jail. It's common practice for them to put cases, pillowcases on their heads and come in with toilet brushes or baked bean cans and serve justice that they feel needs to be done. So I go to work this day and a gentleman says to me, um, what are you gonna do about this? And I said, well, I've just gotta, I don't know, try and survive, what can I do? Another guy said to me, I should take the law into my own hands, I should bring a toothbrush to work the next day. And this is a bit graphic, but I should actually stab the guy in the neck, flush it down the toilet and I'll be left alone. And it says in the Bible that God hasn't given you a spirit of fear, but a love, peace and a sound mind. But I could feel 
so scared and so, I was so, so frightened in that moment. I thought, is that a good idea? No, that's not a good idea. There was a gentleman up the back of the workshop. He said to me, can I pray for you? He put his hand on me and he started to pray. I'm looking at this guy, to be honest, somewhat embarrassed that he's praying for me in this situation. And he's saying, God, show him you're for him and not against him. Put a hedge of protection around him. After the altercation, I'd walk into that unit, I'd get hit, I'd get abused, I'd get spat at, I'd get yelled at. I was on eggshells. That day I walked into the unit, God was with me. But I didn't go, bang, God, you're here, come into my life in that moment. He kept working, but that was the most defining moment of my life. About three months later, he had everybody that I needed in that space for his, for his work. About three months later, I got down on my hands and knees in a cell after attempting to take my life. I said, God, I give up. Please come into my life. And he did. He came into my life. I had an appeal in. My barrister said, you'll go home. He was one of the best barristers in Queensland. He said, mate, I believe you'll be home by Christmas. I've been in for three years. The best thing God done was leave me in jail for another four and a half years. That was the best thing that he done because I could learn who he was, I could realise I didn't have to get out of jail. I could stay there and tell people who he was. What a field jail is. Mm. People in, people in, people. It was awesome. We had church groups. We saw men come to faith. On Most of the guys that got out with me are now pastors. Wow. We had this move of God in a prison because God isn't bound by a situation or circumstance. He set me free and who the sun sets free is free indeed. The moment my brother said to me, do you believe God would... If he was wanting you out, you would be out. I hadn't shaved for three weeks. I was growing a bit of a beard. I was having a pity party. That's what I needed to hear. I needed to hear the truth. Because if God wanted me to be out, I would have been out. But God wanted me to be there and work there. And it was like a weight was lifted off me. And from that moment onwards, I'm not saying I didn't have rough days. Because I did. But knowing that I had the king of the universe living inside of me, who was for me and not against me, helping me through that space, I had purpose and I had a plan. So thanks for listening, guys. And like my beautiful wife said, each of you are so valuable and so amazing. And God has a 